Well, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to bring you my full review of this San Renmu 6050LUF-PH-T4 knife base multi-tool. Now, if you've seen my preview, you will know that when it came in it was absolutely filthy, which I was very surprised about. Normally uh, when I get stuff from San Renmu, it's very, very clean and shiny and looks the business, but for some reason or other, this one was disgusting, but luckily I've um, cleaned it up since then. Anyway, let's take a closer look at it, shall we? So as usual, we'll start with the blade and we should have uh, fun with the uh, exposure control on here with this nice bright blade. Um, you can see the San Renmu logo here, the model number, two. Um, moving along, we can see the uh, plastic handle as it were and uh, we have the carabiner this is another one of my carabiner style knives by the way and um, we have a, a glass breaker and there's a little LED torch in the end there too hang on let's see if we can get it to uh, there we are uh, moving across to the other side we have the uh, the other tool that folds out this is a, a May design, and you can see it's got like um, what they call a hex drive, but it's sort of like a spanner basically. We have a belt cutter, and on the end we have a Phillips screwdriver too. Um, as you can see, it's uh, quite wide. We'll have a look at that in a moment. We've got thumb studs on each blade, a nice designed pivot going on here, and we also have blade stops as well. Okay. Oh, well, also, yeah, that's a good point. We've got a wire stripper and what they call a, a chisel. I mean, I don't know what you're supposed to chisel with uh, this sort of shape. It's rather strange, really, but we'll try, uh, we'll try them out anyway. It comes with the usual very nice San Renmu uh, instructions. Um, here are the, uh, the basics. You can pause the video and have a look if you wish. Hmm. Quite handy. Right then, so what does this little fellow do exactly? Well we have the blade, which is like a hollow grind here, um, but it's a chisel grind because the other side of it is uh, just plain as you can see. As I say, we've got a thumb stud, you've also got this uh, hole in the blade here, which you can get your thumb into to help open it if you wish. It locks open, we just press this little this little bar here to release it and it is the same on this side too this one also locks open in the same way you just press it in and release it and we can also open this out as we know <clears throat> and we have um, a little Phillips screwdriver here strangely enough there is no flat bladed screwdriver on here at all that I can find which is a little odd because it sort of limits you to um, doing Phillips and Posi drives. We also have a, as I say, belt cutter, this little um, spanner, which we've got four, six, eight, and 10 mil. Um, I shall be taking this down into the workshop in a few moments just to try these little tools out. We'll see how well it gets on. Um, apparently you can also open bottles with the carabiner end of things, and we will be trying that out as well in the kitchen. Okay, let's see how good this thing is then. And of course you can see what you're doing with it as well. Let's give it a go. Oh, hang on. Let's not get. Oh, oh dear. Uh, well, so far, guys, it's not getting out this bottle at all. Hang on. Oh dear. Okay, goodness sake. Ah. Well, eventually then. Right, um, we have a little push button for the torch here. I've got some outdoor footage of the torch. Um, it is actually a lot better than the camera shows it to be, but we'll, we'll see that later on. Um, I suppose we better get the old <coughs> bits of bag in 
and see just how good this blade is. And here it is. Um, we'll start with the sheet of paper as usual. See what it can do on paper, shall we? If I can do it. I'm not very good at this. Here we go. Look at that. That's not bad. Could be better. I suppose it could be that little bit sharper, but um, it's not too bad. Uh, we'll give it a try with the cardboard again. Let's have a look. So we'll do with cardboard, shall we? Oh yeah. Yeah, it likes the cardboard look. It does a good job on that. Especially if I can keep it on the cardboard. And oh, what have we got in here then? Um, let's try the rope. I want to get out of it. Where is it? My uh, oh, some garden twine. Huh, that just came out with it. So as it's out, yep, easy enough. Right, the rope then. Let's get it doubled over so we can see exactly what we're uh, about. And again, hang on. I can never get this bit right either, look guys. But there we are, just enough to get hold of, hopefully. Right, so that's a, a nice little loop. Get the blade in there and see what happens. Oh, it's caught up in the sharpening choil. <laughs> Well, it seems to have uh, cut through that quite nicely then. Let's, oh, here's some offcuts. Let's uh, get that back in the bag. Get the old chopping block in. See what it's like chopping it up with the belly. Oh yeah, look at that. Just roll the belly round it. And I've just, um, that's an interesting little find. If you're not careful, you can get your finger stuck in the, uh, the carabiner. Huh. Okay. Oh, let's leave this out a minute because there's some um, speaker cable in here. I've got a little bit left. So we can chop through that. I'll tell you what we'll do is just chop it this way this time because I've not got a lot left of it. But yeah, it, it cuts through that quite nicely. I'll say the, um, the ergonomics are a bit, a uh, little bit uncomfortable when you're chopping stuff like this. Yep, so now it goes in my finger again. Right, um, let's try the seat belt. Lynx seat belt, give that a go. Get a loop going, get the blade in there, and oh yeah, listen to that. Yep, chops through that quite nicely, doesn't it? Uh, the, it's got a nice point on the end, so it should be good for piercing, and it is. What about going that away? If I can keep hold of it. And no, no, it's made a mess of it look. <laughs> Brilliant. Right in. Um, let's give the belt cutter a bit of a go, shall we? I'll bring the paper back in. There we go. Let's try the paper with the belt cutter. Blimey, do you know I think that's sharper than the blade? Wow, look at that. That's sharper than the blade. Where's the cardboard? Here's the cardboard. Wow, look! Superb! The belt cut is sharper than the blade. Uh, now how am I going to... Uh, hmm. Hang on. Right, we're getting a little vice involved here, I think. Right, so what we'll do is we'll tr try and trap Link's seatbelt in the vise if we can. Yes, I think I've got it. Right then, now we can keep it under some form of tension as we try out the uh, belt cutter. That was pretty good. So the belt cutter works fairly well. I wonder if we could try it with um, zip ties. Let's have a look. Yeah, took a chunk off of there, look. Yes, very nice. Um, I ought to try the, uh, the blade with the um, zip tie now, I suppose. Oops. 
Yeah, it's that funny shape. It's just, you've got to get it at a, a funny old angle to bite into it. Look. All right, let's just try chopping. If this is long enough for me to get hold of, try chopping it in half. Oh, slipping off a bit. It's got through eventually. It's only a little short blade, of course, as we know. Um, what else we got in here? We could try. Where's that? Oh, where's the um? Oh, here we are. Let's try some of this thick package strapping, shall we? Again, we've got to have a, a fairly odd angle to get it to cut into the uh, strapping. Try cutting it in half. Gonna have to get some. I think I've got some new stuff in the cupboard actually. I'll have a look later on. There we go, it's made it through. So, a good result on the blade and the um, belt cutter too. Let's try the belt cutter with some package strapping, shall we? Oh, it's nice and squeaky, look. I like that. Yep. Um, what we'll do is now, we'll whip down to the uh, workshop and try out the uh, other bits and pieces, shall we? Okay, so here we are in the workshop. I've got the uh, 6050, a couple of small screws here. Uh, Phillip, one's Phillips and the other's a posi drive. And I've got some um, nuts and bolts we can try. But first off, we'll try the um, screws in this wood here. First of all, we'll make um, the usual little hole. We'll drop this little small Phillips into it. As you can see, it fits in the uh, screwdriver bit quite nicely. Oops! Let's chuck it on the uh, chuck it on the floor, shall we? Nearly. Right, pop them in the hole then, and get the. Uh, screwdriver going and obviously being um, Phillips style posi as well um, it does a good job of getting the screw into the wood okay just make another hole here just so, like so pop the slightly larger screw in this larger posi in there and see how this uh, gets on oh hang on It's doing a reasonable job, guys. And of course, being locked, it can't collapse like um, some of the other drivers we've tried. This is actually a little bit big, this screw head, and it's if I don't push hard enough, it's trying. Oop, there it goes, jumping out. Look. Okay. It's done a, quite a good job of putting those screws into the wood then. Now, before we start on this M6 nut and bolt here, I'll just point at these little arrows and they show you the uh, direction you should be pushing against while tightening nuts uh, and this is because it then pushes it against the pushes the tool against the uh, blade stop here let's give it a go see what it can do if I can get it on there we are we're on right in. so we'll give it a nice tightening up here yeah that's a fair amount of pressure on there I'll give it some um, Oh blimey, that is tight. Now, when we want to undo it, we're going to have to turn it over so the arrows are going in the same direction, pushing against the uh, blade stop. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's how tight it was. Let's um, try an M5, shall we? Here we are, the slightly smaller M5, um, which goes down into the 8 mil. Right in spanner, turn it around, oh it's quite loose, look, hang on. There we go, right, now we can get it on there, and we'll give it some welly, look. See how tight we can get it. Oh, it's slipping off, can you see that guys? Alright guys, I've had to pop the macro lens on, but watch it flexing and opening up, look, as I tighten the nut. Look at that. That will slip off quite easily. Hmm. Bit disappointing there. Let's turn it over a minute. 
put it back on. We'll try loosening it and see what happens. Ugh. Well, it's done it. It's loosened it. But it's, um, hmm. That's a little bit disappointing then. Let's tighten him up again. As you can see, it's tightening, but it's trying to open at the same time, look. Hmm. Okay, so what about some wire stripping then? Shall we give that a go? Turn it round. Will it come off? Yes, it does. It strips it quite nicely. Okay guys, so here we are back from the workshop, which is pretty chilly. So I've got myself a nice warm cup of coffee. Mm. Let's get that out of the way. Right, let's get the tape measure in. How long is it closed? Um, looking at uh, about 95 mil long. That's closed. What about with the blade open? Uh, open, I can see here about 145 mil long, which is what gear best have got two. Uh, the blade length, as you can see, is 50 mil. So, how much does this little fellow weigh then? So it's 75 grams, or two ounces and five eighths of an ounce, if that makes sense. Okay, for a few size comparisons, let's sit it on a playing card. Give you some idea. And we'll have a look with my um, NLAN M027. Open the blade up. There we are. And my UK PK clone, which is a lot bigger, obviously, as you can see. And my UK. Uh, the, my Spyderco Squeak. Right then guys, let's take a look at the uh, glass breaker tip, shall we? And I'm going to use this um, jam jar. Okay, so as we can see, it does have a proper tungsten carbide tip in there. So let's get the glass jar in and see what it can do. Here's the jam jar then. I'll bring in the tool. Keep it in focus as well, hopefully, maybe. Well, I think you can both see and hear that. There's a little cut in the glass. And if we uh, gently tap it too, we can see we are actually cratering the surface of the glass, look. Good. The torch is a lot better in real life than it is on the video. Um, it doesn't look up to much on the video, but I can assure you it works uh, quite well. All right then guys, so here we are outside of Rathbone Manor in the dark. Let's turn the little uh, San Remu 6050 on. There we go. It doesn't shine very far, but it's, uh, as you can see, it's gonna be enough to uh, light your way, I think you'll find. Here's our little holly bush. Anyway, there you go guys. There's my review of the San Remu 6050 LUF PHT4 multi-tool that I got from Gearbest. Uh, currently, you're looking at about £9.80 each. Um, they come in um, green, FDE, black or orange. Um, the green one is a little bit cheaper for some reason at uh, £9.49 or $11.84 by the looks of it. Um, $12.22 for the other colours. Um, <clears throat> so what do you think? Have you got, have you got one of these guys? Um, did it come in a disgusting state like mine or was it nice and shiny when you got it? 
Hmm, interesting. Let, let me know. Okay, so what do you think then, guys? Would, would you like one of these? Do you carry one on a daily basis? Is it any good for what you use it for? Let me know. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you haven't done so already, you can subscribe, you can click like, you can share it with your friends, and you can also follow me on Instagram. Oh, that's new. I like that. That's good, isn't it? Anyway, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the review, guys. Uh, as always, I uh, really enjoy bringing it to you. Um, yeah, please let us know what you think of it. And I'll... Uh, I'll catch you uh, at Rathbone Manor here again for another um, knife review of some description or another in the near future. All right then, guys. Catch you later then. Have a good Christmas, by the way. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye.